Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is amazing. Andrea is actually on vacation this week and Bruce and Jessica unfortunately had some car issues. So guess what? Uh, on top of everything else, Lori and myself have to do all of the work. Now this is actually the daily list of all the things that the keepers need to do here. And every day we check off every single one. That way we know every animal gets everything it needs every single day. And uh, we're gonna take you guys along on the journey because that's my job for the day. So the first thing we're gonna do is actually do some misting. Now, a lot of our animals are on automatic misters, but we have a handful of cages that aren't on misters, so let's just go ahead and uh, start checking off the list. First one we're gonna start with is actually Jumper, the Cuban Knight and all. And basically why we don't have misters on these cages are the ones that almost would get over misted with our other misters, right? So we just go through and we mist them just so that they have enough humidity, they get their drinking water and all that type of stuff that they need, but we're not overdoing it where the humidity will be too high with them. Obviously stuff like frogs and some geckos and stuff like that need much higher humidity than something like jumper would need here. But that's it, we just go through, we missed all the ones. The next ones up actually are gonna be the leaftail geckos. And a lot of these things like the leaf tail geckos really don't drink out of water dishes. They're gonna drink off the moisture from the leaves and the branches. So just wanna get a nice misting down for these guys. This is the cage I'll probably add a mister to, to be honest with you, because uh, he could be misted right along with the other animals. But you know, we only have a handful of cages we actually manually miss. So I'll go ahead and miss those last ones. And then I'll move on to the next thing of the day. Next up is the, all the veggie eating animals, but the first thing we have to do is obviously take out the veggies from yesterday. We'll clean their dishes up. We'll go ahead and prepare a bunch of the veggies for these guys, and then uh, go ahead and feed them up. You always want that disinfectant to sit for about 10 to 15 minutes so it really soaks in. We'll typically use some quatricide or an F10 solution so that kills all the bacteria and everything like that. So we'll come back to these. Let's go cut some veggies. I just want to give as much variety so each week we kind of switch things up. Right now we're going to give some romaine lettuce, some squash, some carrots, some zucchini. We're also going to give some blackberries as treats and then of course we always dust with a calcium and vitamin powder mix. So again I'm just going to cut this up kind of Cut into spots where they can all eat it. I actually enjoy being kind of part of the daily grind, I'm not gonna lie to you. So uh, it's been kind of a fun way to start the morning. I actually have Missouri tortoise chow here, which iguanas really like, but uh, it's kind of hard, right? So what we do is we just fill it up with a little water, let it soak for about 15 minutes to kind of get it soft so they can eat it almost like a mush. So I'll go ahead and clean all the food dishes while uh, this is soaking and getting kind of moist. And then I just basically divvy up this uh, moistened tortoise chow here. And a lot of iguana breeders, believe it or not, will feed like, you know, a big majority of their food that goes to their iguanids actually do this. We also put a little bit in for the monkey tail skinks too, because they like that as well. And uh, then that concludes the produce portion of feeding the reptarium. I'm extremely sad right now because I think that karma 
may be in his last days here. He is looking really sad. You guys know that he's been retired for the last couple months and uh, he's been doing really well over at BHB, quiet time. Guys, I don't think he's gonna make it through the day. I'm gonna be totally honest with you. I mean, he's not grabbing on. He's just hanging on like this barely. His hands aren't going. His eyes are kind of sunk in and we're gonna do everything we can do to give him the last day two of his life the best we can but guys I, I honestly don't even think he's gonna make it through the day I've had karma for so long he's such an amazing animal and like we like I'd mentioned we retired him so that he could spend his last days here at BHB the last few months he's been amazing we've spoiled him but uh, I mean I'll keep you guys updated but I, I just man I, I'm so, I want to cry right now I don't think he's gonna make it through the day so I just want to spend some time with him before the end. I'm not going to lie, the fact that I have to do all the work that normally Bruce or Jessica or Andrea do is kind of probably good today just to kind of keep my mind off of the whole karma situation because obviously, you know, I get so attached to these animals when things happen to them, it's, it's really devastating to kind of take the wind out of my sails. And so the fact that I can just kind of get over here and spend some time with these guys, I think is at least keeping my mind kind of occupied as uh, as the day goes on but you guys know I love feeding the frogs and at least like I said there's some joy in that that's for sure and uh, that is definitely one of the downsides to keeping animals is that uh, you know these the lifespan of most of these reptiles with the exception of the tortoises and maybe alligators are going to be shorter than our lifespan so uh, karma lived a full life there's no doubt about that and He's an old lizard, but uh, it still doesn't make it any easier. Now it's just time to feed bugs. I'm gonna start actually with baby karma, my other nosy bee panther chameleon. There you go, buddy. I actually got karma when it was a little smaller than this, as a matter of fact, it's like eight or nine years ago, something like that. And uh, it's cool to see the new baby karma kind of growing up and becoming a good animal ambassador, uh, eating off a tongue just like my big karma did. So. Uh, it's really cool and I'll feed this guy a handful of super worms. Look at these little, these guys are little hunters for sure. Oh my gosh, they love the roaches. They're so absolutely, I mean, it's cool to have a little dwarf monitor that's got the intelligence of like Elvis, but just this little guy. And the fact is guys, is that, you know, being able to spend time with my animals is always what makes me the happiest. You know what I mean? No matter how down I am or when things happen, uh, when I get to see animals like these Araki <laughs> monitors eating like this, just being savages, I mean, it just brightens my heart. I mean, it is absolutely the best way to put me in a good mood probably take over everybody would want to know yep, who you we're are. filming you guys. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna feed him to RJ. Okay. I was gonna bring him the new year with something big. You wanna Can I have your boots? Those are pretty nice boots man. Yeah RJ won't eat the boots but Yeah I'll take the boots. Thanks bud. Yeah. Alright guys we're gonna have to unpack some uh little roaches here because Bruce Jessica aren't here yet. I don't want these guys sitting in the box but Kind of creep me out a little bit because just read this right here loose in box let's open it up oh, okay thank god that's what i thought i thought they were in these separate boxes so we always get these small little five eights i don't know i was never good at you know maths or anything Ugh, i think these are the large they're really creepy they grab onto you i don't like them okay it took me a long time to even get used to super worms but let's get them unpacked oh dude that's not cool bro oh my god Oh, it touched me. We'll get these little guys in. Let's see what we got here. I just want to say thanks to Jay. This was an awesome Secret Santa gift. Okay, it's the fossil. Let's see what we got. Yo, thanks, you're buddy. so welcome, bro. You know, you know I got you. Let's see what we got in here. Oh, gosh, it's a devil. It's the devils. What? Did you just call me the devil? No, no, the, no, the bugs. No, the bugs are the devil. I didn't. 
<laughs> that you was perfect so timing. Busted. No, I'm not. I didn't say I swear to you. You can roll the footage back. No, I no, said yeah. the devils are here. The I opened back. it and the I said the devil. No, I didn't. Back, you call me the devil. No, right. you are an angel. You are nothing less than an angel. Please, I didn't. I was you talking about the so bugs, busted. you guys. I was talking about the roaches. I swear. Yeah. Okay. It's not a good way to start the new year, okay? That's all I'm gonna say. Maybe I'll take you guys over and we can feed some baby frilled lizards, cause Let's I haven't do done that. that. Yeah. Let's do that. That's we'll okay. show you from box to gut, all right? Oh my God. I've never seen anything like that. I don't think he rolled over like a dog, so I'm gonna assume that he probably went under Matilda or she crawled over, and we obviously have to take care of this, but I, I guess I've seen it all now. <laughs> all right, guys. So, <laughs> this is ridiculous. Um, he obviously needs a bath, so that's what we're going to do. <laughs> all right, guys. We got the bugs out of the box. I got Mary with me over here. And uh, we figured we'd feed these little baby frilled lizards. We'll have to mark the charts, make sure everything we do uh, correctly over here because this really isn't our turf. But I want to see these little guys eat. You know what I mean? I can't believe the size of Mary. Open it up. Open the cage. Let's see what we got. Look at Little Mac. Oh, dude, you're not little anymore. Let's see if he'll eat a roach. Here, hold on to him. Let's see if he'll eat it out of my hand. Oh! That was <laughs> awesome. You know what? Now that we're working with these, the price just keeps on going up, people. You know what I mean? These are hand-fed babies. Come on, Santana. Let's go. And it's like I've always said, you know, feeding bugs and stuff like that to monitors is really healthy for them. You know, having just a, a complete like meat diet isn't that great. In the wild, these guys are gonna be constantly kind of working around, you know, running around the fields, just kind of looking for bugs, and they're gonna be kind of eating bugs all day long. So this is more of their natural diet on the normal side. Of course, they're gonna occasionally come across a rodent or a bird or maybe a dead animal that they can scavenge on. But the majority of the time, in particular with savanna monitors, they're gonna be foraging for bugs just like this and uh, much healthier for it. That way you don't get what they call fatty liver disease with these guys where they get too much fat in them and it can shorten their life a little bit because they're eating machines. They'll eat and eat and eat and really eat themselves to death. All right, nice and fresh. And ready to go back. <laughs> All right, Steve. I'm sure he feels a lot better now. <laughs> I know I do. <laughs> Flamin' Hot has a whole bowl of veggies, but I'll see if he wants a little treat with a roach. He loves roaches. There you go, buddy. There you go. Just gonna see if my boy wants some roaches here, Toothless. I'm not sure if he will or not, but he might. Oh, yep, there he is. Oh, yep, yep. He got it. <laughs> there it is. Good job. And again, just really good to vary things up with these monitor lizards so that they're not just eating chicken and, and fish and rodents and stuff like that. Plus a little hunting is good for them too, you know? There it is. There <laughs> you go, toothless. Oh my God, this guy is such an amazing animal. It's honestly impossible to be in a bad mood when you see these types of things. I mean, it's so cool. And I think back to when I first got toothless and and he wasn't doing well, and I wasn't even sure if he was gonna make it because he had kind of a little infection and stuff like that. And uh, and now here, fast forward a year, and this guy is just unbelievably doing well. And although, you know, no matter what happens, when I lose one of my animals that I love, my pets, my animal ambassadors, it's such a heavy hit to me. But I also realize I'm surrounded with so many amazing animals, and I get to experience such incredible things on a daily basis that uh, I, I really do feel blessed. Oh, he got away, got away. Oh, he caught it. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> At least Toothless can put a smile on my face. Really, honestly, so many of these animals, even when I'm feeling down, can put a huge smile on my face because they are truly incredible. Oh, guys, I've been keeping an eye on Karma for the last few hours, and I knew it was really close, and fortunately, Karma's gone, and... You know, it's part of keeping animals and it's the part that is the most difficult by, by a long shot. Um, karma lived a long time. We knew that karma 
was going down getting older and that's why we brought him over for the last few months he was just you know it, it doesn't get any easier guys i've been doing this forever and you know that's part of it it doesn't get any easier but i'm glad that we uh let him have the last few months here where he really was for most of his life right here in this exact spot where he felt comfortable but my poor karma's gone and um I'm not gonna cry because I don't I don't want to do that but I want to cry <laughs> um, you know this happens and I know that some times it's hard and, and some people don't share this experience but I want you guys to know how much these animals mean to me and and that if you're getting into animals this is something you're gonna face at some point too karma lived a long life probably overlived his life expectancy and he made so many people happy he was such a good animal ambassador for us i'm so glad that he was able to spend the first you know seven eight months of the reptarium over there before we brought him back into retirement and um so i'll always remember him we got baby karma that's doing so well next door and um but I'm going to take Karma and I'm going to just get a little box for him and I'm going to bury him out in my backyard so he'll be close. Um, so yeah, I don't want to get, I don't want this to be a bummer video at all. So um, I'm going to just move on and, uh, but please, uh, but Karma's gone. So got through all the animals, got everything good. Everything is happy and healthy here. And it did really help me kind of take my mind off of things with karma. You know, it sucks. I mean, it's always gonna suck. That's the way it is. But unfortunately, that's also part of keeping really any animal that is gonna live a shorter lifespan than a human. And uh, I just know karma really affected a lot of people's lives. People love karma. I love karma. The crew love karma. And he's certainly going to be missed. There's no doubt about that. But thank you guys for bearing with me here and being a part of it. I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow.